at the back of the booth. There's one for the ladies, there's one for the men, there's multiple stalls in there. If you don't know which one's which, you open the door slowly, say hello, and introduce yourself. I'm sure someone will let you know if you're in the wrong spot. Uh, also, we do ask you all to remain seated, okay? The crew may periodically come around and ask you to take a seat. That's for safety, of course, but even more so for visibility. We're pretty full this afternoon, so if you're standing up, I can pretty much guarantee you're blocking somebody's view. So uh, go ahead, grab a seat for us, get the picture, and then sit back down, all right? Lastly, your crew this afternoon, is, uh, this afternoon up top, Captain Chris is driving the boat. My name's Captain Heather. You also have Dave at the bar. You have Kyle, Mueller, and Rebecca on board as well. Any questions, comments, concerns, just flag one of them down. All right, enough of the boring stuff. That's not what you guys want to hear about. You want to hear about the rich people, right? Yeah. No? If you guys don't want to hear about the rich people, what are you doing on this boat? That's what we do. We'll start over here. You guys see it? I saw a bunch of you taking a picture of the yacht here. Yeah, you're getting good pictures. Put up on, you know, Facebook and Instagram and what else? Twitter. When you do that, make sure you're tagging that as not Usher's yacht. Okay. Yeah. Gotta be honest, not Usher. <laughs> oh, there you go. Give a wave to the people who work for the rich people. Yeah. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> That's, what <laughs> That's what they do all day, every day, guys. Clean. You ever want to work on a yacht? You think it's glamorous? That's what your job is. You clean. Now, we have just exited the BMR Yachting Center. This is actually one of the world's premier mega yacht marinas. We can fit up to 250 vessels in here, yachts of up to about 300 feet. So we will get the big ones in. Uh, we are in our off season for yachting, though. Do keep in mind, you know, in case you guys didn't already notice, it's hot and humid. And this is actually our off season here in South Florida. Most folks uh, don't want to visit, don't want to uh, cruise or yacht down in this general area this time of year. So we are uh, in our slow season. We don't see as many yachts and cruise ships this time of year. Uh, but the ones we do, this is a common spot for them. It's also the home of the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. Every October, we do host the world's largest on-water boat show over this house. Looking down at it uh, from above, you can see it's actually in the shape of a butterfly. Uh, this staircase there out front that you see, those are going to be the antenna, and then the house itself would branch out and form the butterfly's wings. Now that is uh, a zero lot line property. So basically when they, when they built the home, they built it to take up pretty much every square foot of the lot that they bought. So they got creative for parking. The garage is actually underneath that house. You may have noticed you could see through it as we drove by. Uh, that garage holds 10 cars and two limousines. Yes, I know, exactly. I'm very angry when both the limousines don't fit in the garage. It's, you know, the struggle is real, right? Yeah. The house also has two elevators inside. Not one, but two, okay? I mean, because once again, what if one were to break? I mean, you're going to make me walk up the steps? I think not. So, they took care of that in that house. Uh, the sun deck, the roof, if you will, is the sun deck. It also has a jacuzzi up there and a putting green. So, pretty much all the amenities you could ask for in a private. If you're local to South Florida, you might remember the commercials. If you need a car, truck, or van, you'd call Mulrooney. Now you call Auto Nation. Uh, he sold all his dealerships off to Wayne Heisek as Auto Nation. He now serves as their COO. So now, you need a car, truck, or van, you call Auto Nation. That's Mike Mulrooney. Uh, the yacht is out, usually parked alongside the house, so he must be out perhaps over in the Bahamas on his uh, $15 million yacht, you know, taking a vacation from the $14 million home. White House on the left-hand side, big black window down the center, that's Michael Mann. Now, among many things, he was the executive producer of Miami Vice. Now, if you were a fan of the television series, that house should look familiar to you. Yeah, I'm seeing some nods. Absolutely. It was usually the, uh, I think the drug dealer's house, the bad guy's house, if you will. About 17 different episodes, you're going to see that home in. A uh, tidbit of completely worthless and useless information. Uh, they did lower the ceilings in there by three feet when filming Miami Vice so that Don Johnson would appear taller on TV. 
This will be nice to just say he's uh, uh, vertically challenged, I guess we'll say. Yeah. Now guys, along the way I do try and bounce back and forth and point out houses on each side of the boat. Bear in mind if I'm uh, talking about a house sale, that is where we're headed first. We're going to go into downtown, through downtown, and way out west. We're actually going to end out west of Interstate 95. That's how far inland we're going to go to get out to the island. Now, if we took a turn to the south here, uh, we'd actually end up out in Port Everglades, third busiest cruise port in the world. If we continued south in about three hours, we'd end up in Miami. About 10 hours after that, we'd uh, actually make it all the way down to Key West. About 10 hours after that, we could get to Cuba. And about 15 minutes after that, we'd probably all be in jail. So uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and keep headed to the west here. Now, property coming up on our right-hand side, you can see sometimes at the end of these aisles, because they aren't islands, these are peninsula aisles, if you will, they actually have the street names, so you can kind of navigate where you are. This is here at Royal Plaza Drive. Las Olas is just a couple of blocks over that way. This house on the corner, this is the poor little rich girl. It's Gloria Vanderbilt. I'm sure a few of you have heard of her. Um, designer, socialite, developer of designer blue jeans. Anyone know who her son is? Anderson Cooper, absolutely. I heard a couple of you say it. Absolutely. CNN, AC360, 60 Minutes, and Anderson Cooper grew up right here in South Florida. Now, if you look off to the left, you can see the lighter color in the water there. This was actually an island at one time. Uh, back in the 50s and 60s, it flourished. It was called Coconut Island. It has eroded away now. Now that's uh, what the locals would call Beer Can Island. So on the weekends, they come out, they drop anchor. It's very shallow, about a foot at low tide. So they anchor up the boats, they drink their cans of beer, and they spend the whole day out there at Beer Can Island. We call it Gilligan's Island sometimes because boaters unfamiliar with our local water will come blasting in and end up hitting that sandbar in, you know, Gilligan's Island. I thought it was going to be a little three-hour tour. They spent a lot longer there because they need assistance getting off that sandbar. Now, some prime property here on the right-hand side. You're looking for a place to build your little piece of paradise. Eight million will get you this lot. It's a very good deal now, right here on the corner of the Intercoastal Waterway and the uh, New River. Now, I say it's a good deal because it's uh, gone down in price because they tore the house down. When the house sat on the property, uh, it was $15 million. So it's a lot cheaper now. The house they tore down, originally built by Lee Majors, if you guys remember him, $6 million man. It's a long time resident here in Fort Lauderdale, actually still owns a condo along the beach. And he had built the house when he was with Farrah Fawcett. So that was their dream home together for a couple of years at least. Once again, yeah, give a wave. Why not? All five fingers when we wave. Keep it friendly. She's going to take a picture. Smile, everyone. Hey. <laughs> house uh, on the other side of the boat there, yellow one, and the lot next door. This is all John Herma of Cole's Department Stores. Uh, they have six stores now in South Florida, so it's safe to say we're helping put a few new shingles on the roof. Uh, we expect him to construct his dream home there on the empty lot, use the existing structure as a guest home. Uh, fairly common practice. Usually uh, what happens is these millionaires and billionaires just buy the house and level it and then rebuild. Nobody wants to live in a used dream house, but uh, he went a little further, bought a house and a lot. Now, off to the right-hand side, we have Wayne Huizinga's sister, Bonnie. Wayne's our local billionaire, and Bonnie lives there with her husband, Whit Hudson. Uh, they made their fortune, um, well, picking up our garbage, actually. We put the barrels at the end of the driveway, and their trucks pick it up. Uh, waste Management, Republic Services, Southern Trash. Then you have Stephen uh, Hudson over there. This is Wayne Huizinga's nephew that lives in the cream-colored house. He worked for Uncle Wayne at Blockbuster Video. He was their COO for the majority of the run of that particular business. Now, Wayne Huizinga's our local billionaire. At one time, he owned about a dozen properties here along the water, long-term resident here in Fort Lauderdale. Now, his mansion used to sit on this huge lot. Uh, he lived there until 05, Hurricane Wilma. When Wilma hit, uh, Wilma caused a ton of damage. 
Uh, so we actually ended up packing up and moving further upriver. We're now starting to see movement and construction out here. Soon we're going to see five houses. They broke that one property up into five separate lots. So it was a single mansion, soon going to be five uh, more modest sized mansions, if that even exists, instead of one ridiculously large lives. And that's the gardener's shed. And then you're going to have five more homes. And they're all interconnected, pretty much uh, all of them connected via breezeway. And we'll wrap all the way around the corner. And this is going to serve as uh, Wayne's main home on his estate. Three-story tall bell tower on the point. Top is the main bells. Second level is where you find the hot tub. You can see the staircase going up there. That's the uh, hot tub, the jacuzzi, if you will. And then the lower level is the sitting area. That's all in the lagoon-style infinity swimming pool. And all the gold on the bell tower is actual 24 karat inlaid gold. It is not paint. Uh, he's worth somewhere around $3 billion at this point, though, so I assure you he can afford it. And we're still going with the house. Light green colored section will be the last piece of the puzzle there at Wayne's Estate. Now we have one more Heisinga property as we make our turn here at Tarpon Bend, the one off to the left, uh, in desperate need of watering on the lawn. Uh, this one looks like something out of Harry Potter. This was actually a wedding present uh, from Uncle Wayne to niece Holly. So she was 28 when she got married. That was her $30 million wedding present. Really, no reaction. So everybody got $30 million mansions when you got married? Really? Wow, I married into the wrong family. I got a blender and a crock pot. So I guess I made a poor decision on that one. Next house coming up on our right is Michael Egan, founder of Alamo Rental Car, which he sold off to, of course, Wayne Heisinga back in the 90s. Sold him his home too. That large estate formerly belonged to this guy, Michael Egan. Now we go to the left-hand side. This house used in the remake of the movie Cape Fear. Robert De Niro, Jessica Lange, and Nick Nolte. Uh, they made you think you were in Cape Fear, North Carolina. They lied to you. You were pretty much uh, here in South Florida for the entire uh, duration of that film, almost entirely filmed down here. Uh, they made modifications to that particular property when filming. They took out the palm trees and replaced them with pine trees, filled in the pool, and painted the home. Give you the illusion of being in the Carolinas. Now we got a couple, uh, dare I say, more modest size homes coming up here. Uh, the one uh, last in line of these smaller, quote-unquote, smaller homes, the white home, the green shutters, that was Dr. Walker. Dr. Walker was our first female physician here in Fort Lauderdale. This is one of the older homes that we have in the city. Her family still owns the house today. That's one of few, uh, very few, in fact, homes that have survived every hurricane since 1932. And that includes Wilma and Andrew, which are the recent ones that were uh, incredibly devastating here in South Florida. Uh, hurricanes, of course, not going to be a lot of fun when they hit uh, in full strength. The wind, the rain, not a lot of fun. What's even more tough for us, though, is the storm surge. That is the water level rising. So depending on the tide state and the moon state, when the Category 5 rolls in, it can bring a huge, huge storm surge. To give you an idea how bad it can be, uh, back in 1928, what's known as the Lake Okeechobee Hurricane brought a 20-foot storm surge. So take the water level where it is, bring it up 20 more feet. So that gives you an idea of, of why the hurricanes are so tough for us here in South Florida. Home on the left-hand side, uh, got to recently had that pool installed. That's actually the former mayor of Fort Lauderdale over there. That's Jim Noggle, served five terms in office for us as mayor. Uh, very, uh, very well-loved, well-received, did a lot of really great stuff for the city when he was in office. They built the Riverwalk, the Museum of Discovery and Science, all sorts of good stuff when he was in office. Now once again, we are still running along Las Olas Boulevard. Give you an idea, kind of help you orientate yourself uh, as to where the new river is running currently. If you look off to the right across the parking lot, you can see the restaurants and shops. That's Las Olas right there. So we're still traveling parallel along it. Uh, 
for a few more minutes at least, and then we're going to branch off away from Las Olas. Now, big building here on the right, green colored. Uh, this is actually the Riverside Hotel. It's the oldest waterfront hotel here in Fort Lauderdale. Opened its doors back in 1936. Ribbon cutting here was actually done by an actor, and this particular actor went on to become President of the United States. Exactly, Ronald Reagan, you got it. Now we are starting to float over the Henry E. Kinney Tunnel. The state of Florida now has two tunnels as of about a year and a half ago. We're going over the original one, 45 feet below us. The cars are traveling on Federal Highway on Route 1. Now the reason for the tunnel is this white house here with the green trim. That is the Stranahan home. It is the oldest home in Fort Lauderdale. It was built in 1901 and it served as the original trading post with the Seminole Indians. Now throughout the years, it's been a hotel, a restaurant, a post office, a general store, you name it. It's worn many, many hats throughout the years. Now, uh, of course, a historic museum, and because of the historic significance of the property when expanding the road, uh, putting a bridge over the river could have caused damage to the Stranahan property. So they went ahead tunneled underneath it. Now you may have uh, noticed that the landscape is starting to change as we are getting into the heart of downtown. We're out of houses for a few minutes and we are in to what I call Condo Canyon. That's what we're seeing now on both the right and the left hand side. This is all condo living. Now 30 or so years ago downtown Fort Lauderdale here along the New River is not a place you really wanted to spend a lot of time. It was very run down, uh, you know, kind of seedy if you will. Uh, they've revitalized the whole area, of course, and nowadays some of your most expensive condo living that exists in the entire county, in all of Broward County. It's probably a, a, a flip of a coin, depending on the day, as to what's more expensive, down here in these condos along the river or in a condo along the beach. Just to give you an idea, I, I looked it up, I was curious. If I want to buy the penthouse there at the water garden on the right, I need to come up with at least 180000 and that will be my 10% deposit on a $1.8 million condo unit, so very expensive. Now, 3rd Avenue Bridge is going up in the air for the Jungle Queen. We're going to cross through seven bridges on our way out to uh, what we call our Jungle Queen Island. These bridges are on-demand bridges, on request, so it's just as it sounds. Captain Chris got on the radio, called the bridge tender up there, and said, hello there, we're on our way. When you get a chance, can you open the bridge? And as soon as they clear off the cars and any pedestrian traffic, they'll go ahead and open the spans. Those bridges are manned 24-7, 365 days a year. Uh, so there's always somebody up there to open the bridge. They do lock them down Monday through Friday in the morning and in the evening for 90 minutes. And that's just to help the traffic flowing in and out of downtown during rush hour. But otherwise, they will open up whenever you need it. They are on request. Now, if you look on the left-hand side, huge building over there. I mean, monstrosity of a structure. I call that a gated community. It's... Uh, a really, really big gated community, great security there, 24-7. Uh, it's actually the specialty at this particular gated community is that security. Uh, 1,500 guests were staying there, free of charge last night. Bar in every room, a couple of people have picked up on this, yeah, Broward County Jail. Yeah. Yep, $57 million gated community, it's a really, really good security. I wish I was kidding. That's actually the main jail for the Broward Sheriff's Office. So even serving time in Broward County is done in the lap of luxury and enjoying beautiful downtown skyline views. Now, Andrews Avenue is slowly but surely going up in the Air Force. So just a momentary pause here as uh, we wait for the spans to open up enough for the Jungle Queen to pass on through. If you look on the left-hand side, you'll see the downtown or saloon in Maxwell room. It's actually uh, the, the brick portion that goes down in the back there. That's actually the oldest saloon in Fort Lauderdale, opened in 1925. 
Now the downtown are, are good friends of ours here at the Jungle Queen. You head over there, you tell them uh, Captain Heather sent you, show them your receipt, and you're going to get 10% off your check over there at the downtown. -er. So I do recommend it. Definitely my favorite spot. Once again, you're you're just a couple blocks from Las Olas. You can actually see Las Olas still running right out there as we come through Andrews Ave. Now, just on the other side of Andrews Ave, you have your second restaurant option if you want to grab a bite to eat or a drink here along the water in downtown. Only three restaurants. This is your second one, the Brady Riverfront Pub. This is an Irish bar. Uh, very uh, fun and interesting decor in there. Uh, great uh, live entertainment every weekend. Always a great spot to hang out and watch the world go by here along the river. Next door to the Briny, you'll have the Riverfront Marketplace. This is shops and restaurants. Once again, just a short walk out there to Las Olas. If you haven't uh, spent any time out on Las Olas, I do recommend it. Over two dozen restaurants available, uh, shops and boutiques, art galleries, you name it, it's out there. Uh, I consider that our Rodeo Drive here in Fort Lauderdale. So worth, uh, worth checking out while you're uh, visiting us here in Fort Lauderdale. Now up ahead of us, our third of seven bridges. This one's a little different, as you can tell. It doesn't look the same. This one is a train bridge. This is the Florida East Coast Railway. Uh, this runs between Jacksonville and Miami. Uh, this particular bridge originally part of the um, part of the original Flagler Railroad uh, that ran at, at that time from Jacksonville all the way down to Key West. Now. This bridge is not actually controlled here in Fort Lauderdale. There's a bridge tender there that we can talk to, but he doesn't actually do the opening and lowering of the bridge. That's all done in Jacksonville. So uh, you, we only get a, a six minute countdown. They give us a six minute warning and then they'll start to lower that bridge. Once they're doing that, who knows? It could be 10 minutes, it could be longer. Uh, that bridge, as I said, all controlled up in Northern Florida, up in Jacksonville. Uh, we, you probably noticed back there on the left, the Pirate Republic Bar. That's your third option of, uh, of actually being able to dine and uh, drink here along the river. Yeah, give a wave over there, the guys at the water taxi. How we doing? Good to see ya. Over on the right, you've got some of original Fort Lauderdale History Center and Museum tucked in there. Uh, all located here along the river walk. Now, you may have noticed this brick walkway that's been running along the new river. Uh, great way to uh, spend some time out here on the Venice of America, the yachting capital of the world. We're never lacking for interesting boat traffic here along the river. Benches spread out along Riverwalk. Another great way to spend some time uh, right along the water. In the Corner Museum of Discovery and Science, that's about 120 square feet of exhibits and programs. Great for children and adults alike. Uh, next door is Broward Performing Arts Center, bringing a little bit of Broadway here to Broward County. Now as we uh, came around the bend here, you can see yet another bridge. As I said, we're going to go through seven bridges to get out to Jungle Queen Isle. This one is the 7th Avenue Bridge. On the water, we always call it 7th Avenue. In your car, this is the Confusion Bridge. For some reason, it actually has three different street names as you're crossing over this particular bridge in the downtown area. From the center to the left is actually going to be 4th Avenue in your car. From the center to the right would be 7th Avenue. The whole thing's also known as Avenue of the Arts. So three different names when you're uh, driving over the bridge. So keep that in mind. It can be a bit on the confusing side. Now as we come through 7th Ave, on the right we'll be passing by Cooley's Landing. This is um, public dock space available here along the river. Now if I'm being technical, all the dock space along the new river is open to the public uh, to rent. Everything is a, is a rate that's charged by excuse me, per foot per night, okay? Cooley's Landing tends to be popular because uh, it's one of the more reasonably priced places to tie up, and you can actually stay here long term. 
During the winter months, this is a very popular spot for snowbirds who are living aboard for the winter months. About $1.75 per foot per night will get you a slip over here. Or you can stay uh, uh, long term, they'll do about $800 a month to stay. Now, it seems like a lot, but it's actually very reasonably priced. At least for Fort Lauderdale, give you an idea of how bad it can be. Uh, where we exited from, where we left, Bahia Mar Yachting Center, that's $10 per foot per night. This is $1.75. Big difference. A lot more reasonably priced. Now, if you're not fortunate enough to uh, be able to live along the water uh, and you're a local boater, you can launch right there too. Public boat ramps. All you got to do is pay to park the truck and trailer. So, a uh, very good deal. Very popular place over there at Cooley's Landing. Now you may have noticed uh, the further into this river we've gotten, it, you know, it gets pretty narrow, it starts to get wide, then it narrows up again, takes a lot of twists and turns. That's because we're traveling one of the very few naturally formed uh, waterways that we have here in Fort Lauderdale. This one actually formed after an earthquake. That earthquake collapsed the roof of an underground river and it exposed an aquifer, if you will. The uh, Seminole Indians settled here at the time. They woke up in the morning. The ground is shaking. It's shimmying. They called it Himmershe. And Himmershe means new water, hence uh, the, the current term of the new river. Now, up ahead of us, we have a big fork in the new river. If we went to the right, we took the North Fork. Uh, we'd end up passing by the site of the original Fort Lauderdale. And if, uh, let's say we're in a kayak or a canoe and we follow it out uh, to its conclusion, this river does connect to the Everglades. So in theory, you can take the North Fork all the way out to the Florida Everglades. Now, we of course are gonna go to the left. We're gonna take the South Fork uh, to make our journey out to the Jungle Queen Isle. Now, as we make our turn, you're going to see up ahead, we have, uh, once again, because this is all naturally formed, we're starting to get into the uh, the windiest, if you will, portion of the river. We basically have a, a full U-turn up ahead of us that uh, we're going to need to take. Now, the landmass up in front of us, turns out it's in the shape of the state of Florida. So the folks who own the property, that's what they call it. They call it Little Florida. It's a great landmark for the boaters. When we're talking to each other on the radio, you can let somebody know. Oh, here I am. I'm coming up on Little Florida. So think of the houses, Jacksonville, the, the pool is Lake Okeechobee. You can see an aerial view of the property there. They have a sign up. So you can see, I'm not lying to you, in the shape of the state of Florida. You're down here in um, Flo uh, Fort Lauderdale, down to Miami. And we're going to take a U-turn right here along, uh, or down at the tip of Little Florida. Now this property been in the same family for three generations now to keep it impeccably maintained this is one of my favorite properties to pass by at night once the sun's gone down and they've got all the lights up uh, they've spared no expense in their landscaping and their electricity bills pretty much every one of these coconut palm trees are all lit up at night i mean they really went all out now if you're looking for um for a great property to buy i highly recommend this one little florida is now for sale that's what that um that aerial sign indicates to me that's that's a for sale sign here for the rich and famous in Fort Lauderdale. It's more subtle, uh, so they don't uh, you know advertise as as the rest of us may. But uh, great property here, over 600 feet of waterfront property, in fact. And now that we've traveled uh, further away from the inlet to the Atlantic Ocean at Port Everglades, and we've gone through a bunch of bridges, now the property values are coming down. That's what determines waterfront property value. Uh, ocean access, how far are you? How many bridges to get there? Uh, because of uh, the fact that we're getting further away, the property value is coming down. Just under five million will get you uh, Little Florida. Obviously still a lot of money, I'm, I'm you know. I'm not that jaded living here in Fort Lauderdale. It's a ton of money, but it's a heck of a lot cheaper than 30 million. So, and that's what some of those houses, when we first got going this afternoon, that's what we were passing by. 15, 20, 30, 40 million dollar homes. Now we're starting to come down a bit. Now if you look on the left hand side, beautiful home here. You can see these archway doors, four facing us. There's two others, one on each end. This is what you'd call an indoor outdoor Florida room. So, Beautiful sunshiny day, the lady of the house 
has it all opened up. Now, if the weather were to turn and all of a sudden start to rain, she hits a button and down comes six doors. Air conditioning kicks on. Now you have an indoor Florida room. Very nice uh, amenity to have here in South Florida. The weather does change on a dime. If you don't like it, wait a few more minutes. It will change again. Now on the right side, peeking between the yachts here, or as we get past them as well, uh, you'll see a two-story white home tucked into the trees there during the Prohibition era days. Uh, this was uh, actually a, a speakeasy and gambling casino run by a very prominent gangster out of Chicago. Uh, that's going to be Al Capone. Now, most folks think of Al Capone as operating out of Miami, and he did. He was busy down there as well. He actually uh, owned a property and, you know, a house that he actually lived in down in Miami. Some folks think he actually owned an island. That wouldn't be 100% accurate. He bought a house on what's known as Palm Island. Uh, but when he bought the house, everybody left. So he ended up by himself out there, but he uh, didn't, in fact, buy the island. As I said, that was a gambling casino, an underground speakeasy. Uh, back in those prohibitionary days, 99% of these houses didn't exist. So this is all very, very jungle-esque, basically an extension of the Everglades. So no one out here to bother. Beautiful home on the left, blue roof. Uh, two pools. You have an exterior and an interior. You guys can see that as you peek through the doors. Two pools. Uh, Lord knows it is hot down here in the summertime in South Florida. You're out there swimming in the outdoor pool. All of a sudden it starts to rain. No problem. Pack up. Go inside because Lord knows you don't want to get wet while you're swimming. So now you got that indoor pool option. Yeah. yeah. They think of everything. You can see the uh, grass-covered hut there on the left, past a whole bunch of those. That's actually called a cheeky hut, you know. I know it's uh, commonly known as a tiki hut, but the proper term for those grass-covered huts, if they're professionally done, are uh, they are actually called cheeky huts. They do originate with the Seminole Indians uh, back during the Second Seminole Indian War. They stopped living in log cabins. They started living in those grass-covered huts. They perfected their construction. And that's what they called them, cheeky huts. So a little bit of uh, education for you out here on the Jungle Queen. Now we're passing through the narrowest section of the river. You can see where it's starting to really take some tight turns in here. Uh, we call this part the wiggles because that's that's what we're doing. We're wiggling our way through. Uh, this little section of the river determines how large a yacht can get up river. Now further up river is where all the shipyards are. We're going to pass by a few of them before we reach the island. We're world renowned for our shipyards here in Fort Lauderdale. But uh, if you have a yacht any bigger than about 200 feet, you can't physically get up this river. It's too narrow, uh, too difficult to navigate. So unfortunately, you're going to have to go elsewhere for your maintenance. Now, a huge condo complex on the left. This is River Reach. This is actually an island. You do cross a bridge to get out here. So some of your most uh, popular condo living, at least during the winter months. Uh, you can see all these hurricane shutters up. Most of the folks that own units here, uh, they are snowbirds. They're up, uh, they're up in some northern states for the summertime. They'll come back uh, about late October, early November area. During the winter, uh, this place is packed. Some of the friendliest folks we see. And as I said, one of the most popular places to live. Because just like the houses are less expensive, the condos are less expensive. Now, you're not going to have to spend, you know, three quarters of a million dollars for a unit. You can get one for about 300000 Still of course expensive but more reasonably priced as we come around the bend yet another bridge up in front of us that's going to be our fifth bridge up there that is the Davy Boulevard bridge now if we had uh, hopped in our cars and we drove out here from Bahia Mar to Davy Boulevard only going to take about 15 minutes so we're we aren't on the fastest mode of transportation here but definitely on the most scenic now we have actually been traveling as fast as we're allowed to go. We are regulated in speed here uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, they want us to keep a slow speed, a minimum wake, so that we don't cause damage. We don't want to damage any of these beautiful boats and yachts docked along uh, you know, people's private property. We don't want to damage their seawalls themselves. Um, it would take a long time, mind you, but constant pounding of, of boat wakes, the waves we make off the back of the boat, uh, can eventually erode away a seawall. And uh, so we, we 
we want to be as respectful as possible. We don't want to do that. That's very expensive to fix. If you own waterfront property, you are responsible for your seawall. Now, this is all maintained by the Army Corps of Engineers. So they'll come out and periodically inspect these walls. If they deem them to be, uh, you know, unfit, if you will, they will come knock on your door. And then you need to replace it to the tune of about $1,000 per square foot. So really expensive to repair, to replace a seawall. So we do our best to be respectful, keep our speed to a minimum, uh, and therefore uh, help the longevity of these seawalls and protect all these beautiful boats and yachts. Now the other reason is manatees. Now we are not in manatee season right now. These summer months is not the season for the manatees. That's gonna be about mid-November to mid-April. Uh, where they will migrate down. They are our original snowbirds, those manatees are. They migrate down from northern Florida uh, and southern Georgia, and they spend the winter months down here. You may occasionally still see a manatee. Uh, this time of year, it's most likely going to be a mother that gave birth during the winter season and didn't want to make the migratory journey back north with the baby. Uh, so sometimes they'll still be seen around, but uh, definitely rare. Now those manatees are an endangered species, so uh, we do have to do everything in our power to avoid them. God forbid we hit one of those manatees. Uh, that is no bueno. That's really bad for us. As, um, as licensed captains, you can actually lose your license for hitting one of those. So uh, we do everything we can to avoid them, and that's why they ask us to keep our speed nice and slow. As we come around the yacht here, take a look at the house on the right, kind of a Spanish hacienda. Now they've done a little different uh, when it comes to docking. Now most of the folks are docking along the seawalls. They actually cut out some valuable square footage of their lot to build a dock. Uh, they normally have in that empty spot, there's normally this, um, it's got to be 60 feet long uh, speedboat, got to be a $30 million speedboat, so they must have uh, popped over to the Bahamas for lunch. But a uh, pretty convenient location, located only, uh, you know, five, six feet from the kitchen door, so don't have to drag that cooler full of beer too far to get out onto the boat, so pretty convenient. Over on the left, we're passing the Citrus Isles. Now this, uh, I mentioned before, you know, back in, especially in those prohibitionary days, this was all pretty much part of the jungle. This was all an extension of the Everglades. So they actually dredged all this out. These are all man-made canals. 90% of Fort Lauderdale is man-made. That's a question I get a lot. Pretty easy to tell. Look down, these canals are perfect. They're perfectly straight, they're rectangles. They're, they're obviously gonna be man-made. You know, one of the fewest naturally formed rivers that we have in the city. Oh, looks like we're gonna have some, uh, some free entertainment over here on the left. Mozart, the, uh, the dog there, likes to entertain. Out here every day, hop in the fence. Come on back, Mozart, don't make a fool out of me. Did you lose the ball? Oh no. Oh, there he goes, come on back. And up and over, yeah. As I said, cheap entertainment. Every day, though, <laughs> every single day, that dog is out there jumping the fence as we pass by on our afternoon and our dinner cruise. Every single day. Uh, a few times the, um, the residents aren't there, you see the dog with the tennis balls, like, shoved his mouth, pouncing on the screen, uh, the sliding glass door, trying to get out, you know, to each his own. He likes to entertain. Sell them. About a thousand dollars an acre would get you a, a plot of land here in the Citrus Isles. These days, some of your most uh, popular, what we call deep water living, and that reflects uh, the depth of the canals here. You can see all the mass of the sailboats. That reflects that these, uh, these canals have a good depth to them. They don't have to worry about sitting on, on the bottom. And once again, because we're further away from that ocean inlet, and we've been through tons of bridges at this point, property value is more reasonable. You're not going to have to spend $30 million for a nice home here. About a half a million to $4 million will get you your dream house here in the Citrus Isles. So uh, once again, uh, not cheap, but more reasonably priced. Reasonable is the key word, I guess. And uh, I know I see you guys taking pictures of the yacht. That's a new arrival, so I haven't had a chance to Google that one yet. I'm not sure who owns the late lady, Lady Lila. 
Uh, if you have a chance, hop on Google. Sometimes you're able to, to pick up the information, at least on links and, and amenities on board. You might not be able to figure out who owns it, but you'll be able to learn a bit about the yacht. Now, as we pass by the canal on the left, hopefully the barge doesn't block the view, but take, oh, it doesn't. Okay, take a look down. You're going to see a boat that doesn't look like it belongs. You guys see what I'm talking about up here? You guys started catching in the back there? Okay, the plane. Um, that was actually, at one time, it was a plane. Uh, it was actually a Boeing 307 that belonged to Howard Hughes. So that used to be a plane that Howard Hughes used to fly. If you uh, don't for the younger ones who might not know, you probably seen the movie Aviator with Leonardo DiCaprio. Now he played Howard Hughes. So that was one of his planes, and he actually flew that right up into the late 60s. I believe it was 1969. They deemed that unflyable, so he was actually uh, basically just gonna junk it. It was headed for the junkyard. The gentleman who owns it now rescued it from the junkyard, turned it into a boat. Now, over the years, it's run into uh, uh, you know, kind of run down, a little bit of disrepair happening. So, uh, once again, if you have a minute, though, it's worth Googling it. It's called the Cosmic Muffin. It's uh, one of the most unique boats I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot throughout the years. So, definitely worth a peek. If you are a diehard Jimmy Buffett fan, like diehard, know every song, he actually wrote a song about that particular boat. Now, I mentioned before, we'll pass by some of the shipyards. That's what we're doing. We have made our turn now. And that's what we'll start to pass by for miles now. If you've drive, uh, been driving around, you've seen the signs for Marina Mile. Well, that's what we're starting to pass by. These are all of the shipyards that these yachts come into town for. This one we're passing by here, this is the largest, definitely the busiest. This is Lauderdale Marine Center, LMC. Now, once again, we're in the off season. That's why it's pretty empty in here. But during those winter months, this place is packed, uh, full of 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollar yachts all tucked in here. Now you see a lot of uh, various celebrity yachts, uh, well-known people's yachts, if you will, have come through. Uh, right up until about two months ago, Blue Guitar was here, that's Eric Clapton. I've seen um, Imagine, that's Ron Howard, Triumphant Lady, Judge Judy, uh, 24 Karat, uh, Jeff Gordon, Sunday Money, Dale Earnhardt Jr., uh, Match Point, The Williams Sisters, Argyle, Ralph Lauren, that's all I can think of off the top of my head, Privacy, Privacy's Tiger Woods, although right now it's probably safe to say Privacy is Tiger Woods' ex-wife, that's probably safe to say, you guys don't agree? Tough crowd, you know that lion would never cheat on its mate, guys, but a tiger would. You're awake. Oh, there you are. I thought I lost you guys. Don't worry. That's the best one I have for you all day. All the jokes are downhill from here. Now, if you look off to the left there, you can see the uh, big bridge. Cars traveling pretty fast. That's Interstate 95. That is I-95. Just on the other side of it is going to be the CSX train bridge. So these are our last couple of bridges. We are almost there, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go under these, through these, and uh, take a right, take a left, take a right, and we will have arrived at the Jungle Queen Island. So I'm going to take this time to talk a bit about the island, how things are going to work upon our arrival there this afternoon. All right, we will start with the basics. We're going to dock along the right side, okay? We'll put two ramps out. So there's going to be a ramp forward and a ramp to the back. Uh, an aft ramp will be out as well. So whichever is most convenient for you. Use the front stairs, use the back stairs. It's all going to take you to the same place. Now once you get out onto the island, we have a ton of uh, uh, different animals for you to view. Some you'll actually be able to hold. Uh, let's see, we have a laundry list. Let's see if I can remember all of them. We have April. April is our 25-year-old uh, Java monkey. She's been with Jungle Queen about 20 20 years now. So April will be out this afternoon. Uh, we have Tarzan and Jane. Tarzan and Jane are our seven-year-old cotton top tamarind monkeys. So they will be out in the cage this afternoon. Uh, we have, what else? Zeus and Luna, which are, they're babies actually. They're about five-month-old Eurasian eagle owls. 
Now, telling you they're babies because they don't look like babies. They are almost full grown already. They'll end up with a five to six foot wingspan once they're full grown. So Zeus and Luna will be out this afternoon. Uh, my personal favorites are lemurs. We have Larry and Mo. Larry and Mo are about five months old and little Curly Sue. She's about four and a half months old. So the lemurs will be out this afternoon for you folks to view as well. We have lots of birds. Uh, quite a few of those are actually going to be out of the cages. So you'll be able to, uh, to hold and get photo ops with uh, at least a few of the birds this afternoon. And of course, we do have our alligators. Uh, we will be running alligator shows for you folks this afternoon. Uh, because of the number of people, we're actually going to run two shows. Okay, we'll do two shows, give everyone a, a better chance to be able to see and hear what's happening with the alligator wrestler in the pit. So uh, for those shows, we'll go ahead and break you up by where you are sitting currently, okay? So the first show is going to be deck one. If you are down Downstairs on deck one, downstairs, deck one. You folks will be the first alligator show, and then immediately following that will be the second one for you folks up here with me on deck two. Now, there is a, uh, a microphone out there on the island. I will announce the alligator shows, but be aware the, uh, the speakers are not the best out there, okay? So if you're interested, really keep those ears open for the alligator shows. Uh, on deck one, if you want to see it, guys, best thing to do is head straight for the alligator pit, okay? We'll give everybody a few minutes to get off the boat, and then we'll start going with that first show. And then immediately following it will be the second show. So when you folks all see everybody walking away from the pit, that's the time to walk over if you're interested, okay? Now, in the meantime, uh, if you're not at the show, we have food out there, okay? Full concession stand available on the island. Hot dogs, hamburgers, cheeseburgers, chicken sandwiches, nachos, pretzels. Uh, we have soft serve, ice cream, sundaes as well. Our souvenir stand will be open as well too. T-shirts and various uh, jewelry and souvenirs, all that available to you. And we also have restrooms out there, okay? There are restrooms on the island. You don't have to come back to the boat. Uh, the ones on the island are a bit bigger. <laughs> if you've used the ones on this boat, you know what I'm talking about kind of tight quarters in here. Uh, so they're a little bit bigger on the island. They do have air conditioning in there as well. So a little bit more comfortable than the ones on board the boat. So you're welcome to use those restrooms out on the island. Now the key, you find the snack bar guys, to the left of the snack bar is where you will find the alligator pit. Big green circle, okay, you can't miss it. To the right of the snack bar, uh, the concession stand, if you will, that's where you're going to find the restrooms, okay. Once again, first show is going to be downstairs, deck one. Second show will be up here, deck two. Keep those ears open. I will be announcing them. Now, lastly, if you've, uh, if you've tuned everything I've said out, tune back in for these last couple things. First, uh, your return time, okay? We're gonna give you folks a full hour out there on the island, so I'm actually gonna give you a couple extra minutes. So we're gonna call a 3.30 departure, okay? 3.30 departure. Not uh, not buy a hot dog at the concession stand at 3.30, okay? Be on the boat eating the hot dog at 3.30, okay? Now, lastly and most important, when you return to the boat, it is open seating, okay? It is open seating when you get back to the boat. I do recommend that you sit on the same side though. If you're over on the right side, I recommend you try and get a seat on the right side on the way back, because then you're gonna see all the stuff on the other side of the boat that you didn't catch on the way in, okay? So I do recommend, uh, it is open seating, but I recommend you sit on the same side that you're sitting on currently. Now that open seating applies for every seat except for the handicapped rows, okay? Uh, the handicapped rows remain handicapped seating, okay? And you folks in those seats know what I'm talking about. But as for the rest of you, open seating. All right, sound good, guys? You with me on that? Yeah. All right, brilliant. We are on our final approach here to the dock. Just go ahead, remain seated for me while Captain Chris uh, safely docks the boat, and then we'll give you a shout. Uh, enjoy your time out on the island once again. Deck one is our first alligator shoe. Shoe? Really? Show is what I meant to say. First alligator show. Deck two will be the second show. And our departure time once again, ladies and gentlemen, 3.30. And uh, we'll catch you on the ride back. It's called Alligator Wrestling. However, truth be told, I am not here to hurt 
could always get a good view of it uh, from the 17th Street Bridge here that we're passing underneath. We also see the independence of the seas and carnival conquest. Those are the three main cruise ships uh, this time of year. Once again, we are in the off season. Now, once we get back into those winter months, we'll have up to 45 different uh, cruise ships passing through Port Everglades. We are the third busiest cruise port in the world, moving uh, about 4 million passengers through. Leonard Weedmoy, uh, for 40 years. Uh, now, he had the house built, and he moved in. He lived there for uh, a whopping four months. And after four months, I uh, was really struggling with allergies, apparently. So. He ended up having to move away. So, built his dream house, but how uh, many billions of dollars on it? Look there for Rich people have problems too, guys. With the inventors of alcohol, they have problems too. Rich people have problems too, guys. With the inventors of alcohol, they have problems too. Rich people have problems too, guys. With the inventors of alcohol, they have problems too. Two doors down from that, yellow roll, multicolored tile roof. That's Tom Odette. Tom Odette of Motel 6. He's the guy that can leave the light on for you at all those commercials. Then he moved two doors down from that, the smaller white ranch style house. You can see all the screened in area there in the back, it's actually a screened in pool. Now back in the 60s, that was probably the largest house on this block. And uh, at that time, that's where you would have found Sonny and Cher. And those I Got You Babe days, that was their hope for many of Now if you look over on the left hand side, you can see all the boats over there. That's the important that early on. It's the oldest yacht club that exists here in Fort Lauderdale, arguably the most prestigious. Tough to become a member. Uh, you put in your application, it's going to be about six board members that need to approve that application. If you're met with the approval process, then it's tens of thousands of dollars every year and your fees can be reduced. Uh, the good news is you don't actually have to put, have a boat or a yacht to join. They don't really care about that. They just want you to have yachts and yachts of money. That's the only thing. You guys are making me hurt it. I'm proud to say I am a member of the Fort Lauderdale Yacht Club. See me at all this. White House on the left hand side, probably the most photographed home in all of Fort Lauderdale. That is a base home behind the White House. So oh, it's, uh, well, I think it's really obvious why it gets that name. It does very much resemble that other White House. Of course, no president has ever lived there. That is Jack Hutchings' home. Uh, Jack made his fortune uh, working with General Motors. He did not work for GM, but he had a long term contract with GM. And he supplied them with hoses and fittings for their automobile and air conditioners. And over a 30 uh, plus year contract, uh, he made a nice 350 million. So, very nice payday for GM. Now it's back to the right hand side. Uh, we'll call it a tan colored hill there. A couple hurricane showers up. That was Dave Thomas's home for a long time. Dave Thomas of Wendy's Hamburgers. I uh, brought you the square hammer and it won't come in quarters. Now, Dave passed away a few years ago as well. That is now Winona's home, his daughter. Winona is Wendy. She's the red haired pigtail girl you're used to seeing in all of the products. He's a doctor to me. Some people argue say he's a bit more of an artist. Uh, obviously, he's going to be a plastic surgeon. I'll just say he's making big ones out of little ones. Mountains out of old hills. Two for one things. It's an uplifting story, folks. We are allowed to love also off on our right big yellow monstrosity coming into view now. It's actually one of the largest houses we've passed by all day today. It's going to be 32,000 square feet of air-conditioned living space. Not a condo complex. It's a private home occupied by two people. Linda and Doug Van Olman. They're the founders of the Silver House. Linda lives on the left side of the house. Doug lives on the right side. We meet somewhere in the middle for dinner once a week. Now they have been married over 40 years, so if you want to see her to a perfect marriage, I'm thinking that might be the answer. 32,000 square feet. How are you going to fight? You can't even find each other in the house. It's going to be a meeting.
beautiful one directly off to the right now. Normally we, uh, frankly, we never really see this house. It's usually blocked by their yacht. And 165 foot long, we have two stones from the Italian made speed yacht. Obviously, are out on the yacht. The whole just as gorgeous to look at. This is on David J. Stern, not the former NBA commissioner, David Stern. This gentleman is a former foreclosure attorney. Unfortunately, it looks like business was pretty good at one point. White House here on the right. This is where you found the original Tarzan, Johnny Weissman, also a five-time Olympic medalist in diving. He's actually one of the founders of the uh, Swimming and Diving Hall of Fame that's located uh, currently right here in Fort Lauderdale. It's actually just to the north side of the Media Bar Hotel. Uh, now's the time to visit, guys. The, the lease is up there, and they are going to be relocating that uh, Swimming and Diving Hall of Fame. I'm told out to California, so still have a limited window of opportunity to check it out. Now, I'll stop on our left here, beautiful gazebo in the backyard. I call it the Budweiser House. This was a longtime home of uh, Presley Anheuser, as in Anheuser Bush. Uh, this is also where they built the 1960s Women's Art with George Hamilton and Connie Francis. I'm currently owned by a, uh, a reality TV star out of Canada. He bought the house about eight months ago. I don't know if we have anyone from Canada on board. If we do, maybe you're familiar with the show Dragon's Den, which is similar to what we have here in the States, Shark Tank. It's just like that. The guy that bought the house is one of the investors of the particular reality show. Uh, as we make our way back into the docks here at the EMR, you can see some construction going on on the island off to our right. The site of that uh, construction, the hole that stood there for a long time was Andy Griffin, the, the uh, sheriff of Bay Bear. Then next door to the construction, big uh, mansion in the middle there, that's Chuck West. That's actually one of three homes owned by Chuck West. He's the CEO and founder of Pet Supermarket. Uh, that's. Um, Original here, originated here in South Florida. It's just like Petco or, or Petco. Seven times miles in another container. Make it a small fortune. Got over 200 stores. And then lastly, uh, the house there with the clean white roof. That's the Oscar Meyer family home. The Oscar Meyer. Oscar Mayer hot dogs, Oscar Mayer wieners. No, there are a few rumors about that particular home. First one. If we were to go over there, ring the doorbell, it's actually going to play us the jingle from the commercials. Yeah, that's what they say. It's the other river is that uh, at the bottom of their swimming pool is a big uh, old mosaic hot dog. Oh, I think it's all a bunch of baroni. Oh, come on, guys, catch up. I know, the jokes don't cut the bus to be rough. Very, very chilly reception by cheesy jokes today. I don't, uh, I don't relish them either, believe me. I could do this all day. I will spare you, though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna forgive you today. I'll pick them. I'll pick them. Uh, quick note on parking, okay? We did ask all of you to park over there at the Bahia Bar Hotel. It will be a special $7 flat rate for you folks on double fee passengers. This is a very simple process, okay? I don't actually need to sign, stamp, or validate anything. This is all going to be on the honor system. So when you're exiting the uh, lot, you'll tell the attendant at the gate that you wrote out the jumping point, and then there you go, $7 for you folks. Okay, very simple. Uh, you'll probably all end up exiting sort of in a wave of people, so they'll probably go anyway. But if for some reason uh, they try and charge you more, just tell me you wrote on the Joko Queen, I know it's $7. Now we're going to dive back along the right side. We'll put both those ramps out into exiting. Please be aware, watch your head and watch your step. We do have some tide fluctuations, so uh, you may have to duck, you may have a step up or a step down, so just be aware.